This week's episode of God Awful Movies is brought to you by BlueApron.com and by our patrons. What was spiritual supposed to be a code word for in this movie? I could never quite figure that out. Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, oh, spiritual, huh? Does this family own, like, a lot of media companies and newspapers, maybe, rigging the election? How come your profile picture's a frog? That's not answering the question. Answer the question. God-awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we're all terrified of what Eli would do if he didn't have this outlet. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is an empty chair because Heath's recovering from a pretty nasty cold, but sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine evening, sir? Well, I'm glad you asked. I have a 90-minute monologue of white guy problems. You see, <laughs> drama club for me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is a movie waiting to happen. We don't want to give it away for free now. So just start <laughs> start jotting that down for the screen treatment. And, of course, making her triumphant and long overdue return to the Gamcast is comedian, sketch actor, writer, and special guest masochist Keisha Zoller. Keisha, welcome back to God Awful Movies. Thank you for having me. Thanks for torturing me this week. <laughs> oh, you bet. We figured it had been exactly 60 episodes. Episodes. That's enough time to, to recover from War Room, and uh, we figured we would uh, we would give you a much much worse movie this time. Well, it's it's like I, I wanted to get the tattoo white people problems <laughs> on my inner thigh, <laughs> and then cut it off. I, yeah, <laughs> and and that's the movie, not Columbine. Let me just get that straight. A hundred percent. One ninety nine point nine eight percent of this movie is. Do you know how hard it is to be upper middle class white and in drama club? It's it's apparently pretty rough. So it's really about the trials and tribulations of drama club. Primarily, yes, those are the stakes of this film. So just for technicality's sake, Eli, tell us what are we going to be breaking down today? I'm not ashamed. It's the story of how hard it is to be upper middle class and Christian, how totally awesome this high school girl was to like everybody, and then she got shot in the face by Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins. <laughs> and I believe Darwin was involved as well. And Keisha, tell me, how bad was this movie? Um, it's, it's the kind of bad where I think I blocked all the teenage white people I've ever met. Uh, <laughs> For fear that they'll contact me with their problems, and I don't want it. No, thank you. <laughs> There's a uh, kid, Keisha's tutoring, who she won't talk to anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, listen, there, there's a, a glass ceiling of pity I have. Uh, <laughs> when you're a woman and a person of color, it's like, ah, the threshold for tolerance of that shit. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm still waiting for, I don't know, uh, any movie where black men get shot and we make it about Christ. I don't know. I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's the next one. That's the next one. Yeah, we'll find one for you, I'm sure. But for whatever it's worth, I I'm a white man and also didn't give a la lick of fuck about <laughs> anybody's problems in this goddamn movie. So, uh, it's at least it's 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 cross racial here. Well, as someone who grew up upper middle class and was in drama club, this movie spoke to me. So <laughs> for somebody who got bullied a lot and thought about shooting up his school, it occasionally spoke to me. But uh, <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. And I feel like while we're on the subject, I feel like this is bad like, for a movie exploiting the Columbine Massacre. Like I, like, I feel like you could make ten other movies exploiting that same tragedy, and this would probably still be the worst one. Yes, absolutely. This is bad at the thing it's trying to do. It's trying to be like, oh, look at this tragedy. Don't you want some Jesus with your sad? But instead, it's just like... 98% of what they cut from Mean Girls, and at the end they were like, oh, fuck, we gotta shoot these kids. We, gotta shoot, we had six minutes of film left. We gotta shoot one of these kids. <laughs> this is on me. I planned the shooting schedule wrong. 
My Maybe bad. we didn't need that fourth prom conversation. But prom's the most important thing in your life Amen. ever. Amen. I mean, I'm well, in my 30s and prom is still the most important <laughs> thing in my life. It's, the, it's where you peaked. Well, to be fair, you didn't get shot at 17 either, so. Yeah. Well, if you didn't peak at 17, I just don't know who the fuck you are. <laughs> <laughs> Nor does this film. Um, and, and now, is there anything that you guys would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Ooh, ooh, can I go with um, best worst knowing that the tragedy is unrelated to your message? <laughs> this movie is the equivalent of pointing out that some of the people love potato pancakes in the Holocaust. Therefore, Hitler hated potatoes, Irish pride. <laughs> That's this movie. Yeah, and I, I guess... The best worst thing for me is in this movie, and, and we'll get to this moment. You got a standing ovation for shit. <laughs> as, <laughs> That's the part as, that really as got an you. Actor <laughs> with my MFA, my Master of Fine Fucking Arts, I feel like I was slapped in the face for the play within the movie. <sighs> that was garbage. <laughs> I give the play alone. An F minus. <laughs> yeah, the movie had some bad shit around that, but I thought the only time the lead actress worked is when she was trying to play the bad actress uh, for the school audition. Um, I was going to go with best worst knowing who the main character was. Like, honestly, was there anyone in this movie whose story you cared less about than Rachel's? Nope, not possible. Like at one time, at one point, we we panned the cafeteria. There was a kid juggling walnuts, and I'm like, let's find out what he does. Let's follow him around, see what else <laughs> he's going to manipulate in a cool way today. He has a skill, at least <laughs> something. He's bringing something to the screen. <laughs> Anyone but this girl. All right. Well, I would say the very worst thing about this movie is that it forced me to sit in a theater for an hour and a half, looking forward to a kid dying in a school shooting, so I could go home. So I'm going to try not to inflict that same thing on our audience. So we'll keep the break brief, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the interstitial inaction of "I'm Not Ashamed." Okay, guys, so so our sponsor this week is Blue Apron. So we thought we'd spice things up a little, see what I did there, with a little cooking contest. Now, for our listeners who don't know, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals for less than $10 a meal. Now, Heath, even before they were a sponsor of this show, you were a Blue Apron customer, is that correct? Mm, yes, that's true indeed. And Eli, you made the claim that you could do anything that Blue Apron could without needing their service. Absolutely, Noah. All right, well, let's take a look. You are both challenged to make three of the meals available in November. Pan-seared chicken with roasted fall vegetables and butter caper sauce, spicy lotus root and purple carrot stir-fry with sweet potato noodles, and lemongrass roasted pork with Romanesco cauliflower and coconut rice. So let's start with the chicken. How was it, Heath? Well, each meal comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card, pre-portioned ingredients, and can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. So it was a breeze. And Eli, how'd it go for you? Well, Noah, I googled how long to cook a chicken for 45 minutes. Then I bought the wrong kind of chicken from the YouTube video I watched. I burned, burned it. I burned it. Then I burned the vegetables. Uh, I thought caper means mystery. So I had no idea what that was. And I stopped. All right, then. All right, let's move on to something a bit more exotic. Heath, how did your spicy lotus root and purple carrot stir fry with sweet potato noodles work out? Amazing. Because Blue Apron works with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States, my ingredients were fresh, tasty, and sustainable. Fantastic results. And Eli? Okay, so for the lotus root, I wrote you a note. Uh, on this napkin saying lotus root isn't real you're racist i saw that i, I did yes. paint some carrots purple but they caught on fire right when i put them in the pan uh, and again there was a lot of fire from the chicken earlier and then you can see my sweet potato noodles you can see how those worked out they're not even noodle shaped that's right noah not even noodle shaped turns out potato is hard to form into a noodle yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And finally, Heath, how was the lemongrass roasted pork with Romanesco cauliflower and coconut rice? Really, really great. This was genuinely a ton of fun to cook. <laughs> Don't do this. Don't do that. Really? And, and, and Eli? I ordered your... a pizza. <sighs> and, and how much did that cost you? 
and twenty two ninety five, and I imagine whatever legal fees I accrued by answering the door naked. It's a lot more than ten dollars a meal, yeah. So check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash scathing. That's blueapron.com slash scathing. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with blue apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash scathing. Blue apron, a better way to cook. My clothes burned off while I was putting out the chicken. <laughs> That's not the first time you told me that. Yeah, but this time it was true. Why would you make it up the first time? <laughs> it's weird. I wanted you to like me. It's a weird story. It's just a really weird story to make up. I'm just saying. I do. Why like don't you know where Soho like is? <laughs> That's it. We're charging Blue Apron for that part too. By the way, <laughs> the whole thing. The Ugh, whole they got an ad. Eli didn't know where Soho was. <laughs> don't listen. <laughs> I'm going to let uh, Heath edit that just so he can cut that out. <laughs> hey, guys. Keisha. Keisha. <laughs> Thank you so much for meeting with me. Really excited to work with Pure Flix. Oh, man. We are so excited to work with you. Oh, this is great. So the movie is called 1134, and it's about the 1134 black men killed by the police in 2015. It's... It's a story of guy, don't, don't guys. Move, don't move. Guys, guys, I, I can see you. Shh, shh, shh. Don't move your lips. Do, uh-huh, do, you uh-huh. think, do you think my vision is based on your movement? Shh, she knows, she knows. Anyway, it's about a, how a systemic approach to racism <laughs> and broken windows policing... God bless America. Let all of those people to Jesus. Ugh. Hey, why didn't you say so? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so uh, who got shot now? Did Shaq make it? I love Shaq. Oh, love, love some Shaq. Shaq. White people. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And before this thing even gets started, it warns us that this movie is based on the least interesting thing ever written White girl high school journals. This is my go-to example of thing that I would not want to read. So don't say you weren't warned. And in case you were doubting how awful this movie was going to be, we basically start this thing out with like with the the footage, the actual security cam footage of these terrorized high school kids. So we're going to start at the very fucking bottom. Yeah, we're going to start by exploiting the actual footage of the Columbine massacre. Like, no dignity, no respect. We're just going to start out with the scary footage and the black and white footage of the cafeteria, and then it ends with the newscaster going, why did they do it? And I wrote, as a joke, in my notes, (laughs) evolution probably, because last week's movie, Ben Stein, in his crazy documentary, was like, evolution made Hitler do the Hitler things. And I was like, ha ha, I have a funny joke for our audience. We will all laugh with much merriment. So just keep in mind that the joke I wrote in my notes will later come true. That's how terrible this movie is. 30 seconds in, and my joke comes in reality. It was... It was painful. <laughs> Early and often. And so now we're going to meet our hero, Rachel, who is our hero by goddamn default. And we're going to meet her at age eight, drawing on her dresser, because apparently this 17 year old girl never did any interesting things. And we have to fill a movie with her. So we're going to start with her drawing on her dresser. Yeah, and I had hoped that she would at least like be inspired by street art a little bit. Uh, no. <laughs> She's tagging it? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see, like, uh, tags. I don't know, draw a mustache on some stuff. But she drew her <laughs> stupid hand on the back of the dresser, which is like, I was like, oh, make it into a turkey. At least that's interesting. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> she couldn't even make it into, like, a turkey. Uh, it was just like, look, I exist. Which is like, <laughs> that's great. I, Good for you, eight-year-old. Uh, I also thought to myself, your parents must buy you really cheap furniture because my parents would be pissed if I drew on a dresser. Right? But- As, the first thing in my notes is crayons do not belong on dressers, you uncouth heathen. Yeah. 
And, like, I, I, I mean, that just started off wrong because I was like, okay, you kind of get to do whatever you want, drawing wherever you want. She was a black little girl. She yeah, yeah, she'd right, right, trouble. exactly. Already, I have no sympathy for this kid. <laughs> the black version of this movie is just an entire thing of her getting yelled at for drawing on the dresser. <laughs> Listen, it'd be a better morality tale. It actually would. It actually would. It would teach a real lesson. And, and it would be more entertaining. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, of course, we get, like, uh, dad leaving home so we can establish that she's got real problems, y'all. Real mm. white girl problems. So she comes from a broken home. Dad left late one night, and her sister is, is, is like, standing next to her going, like, don't worry, Rach. This will be completely insignificant to the plot. You'll have a stepdad later who we won't even introduce. Who will just appear magically. Yeah. And Eli will have to figure out later on in his notes is the stepdad. <laughs> Yeah, and, and of course, so we get the, um, like, we're poor now scene, like mom's doing the bills, except for they're not poor. They're just, like, lower middle class at this point. You know, like, um, like the, the older daughter can't afford car insurance for her car that she also has in addition to mom's car. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble with the, oh, you're so poor. How did you handle it? Also, white people problems. Going to say this. <laughs> uh, you, you, you have a car. You have kids. There were a significant, like, I just got, there were, how many kids were there? It seemed like every scene there was a new kid. And yeah, I, and they just kept popping up. Yeah, and I just kept thinking, if if this was a black family being portrayed with all these kids being lower middle class, <laughs> it'd be like, these people need to get some jobs. And <laughs> and we didn't have none of that uh, because they get to have cars and be all white and uh, have have their problems. And not just that, but they're like lower middle class and their solution is to stand in a circle and pray for total fucking bullshit. They don't stand around and be like, gee, I hope we can put photo on the table. They're like, uh, I want gas money and car insurance and a and new N64. Clothes. Literally, it's right. just like, and you want, I wanted so badly for us to flash cut over to some starving family in Calcutta being like, I would like the rape devils not to come back to our village tonight. <laughs> yeah, but like in the 90s, we didn't care about them, you know? Like, <laughs> pray for abundance. That's that's what we were like all about. Like, I'm still horrified that when she was like praying for car insurance, I was like, on the scope of things. If, <laughs> if I'm taking uh, a step over here and judging your Christianity for a second, I don't know. Why don't you pray for your dad to come back? Perspective. <laughs> right. Yeah, I feel like you're not going to the root here. Yeah. Practical stuff. Yeah. <laughs> She really needs to crack down. She's like one of those ladies who has to watch other people who shop with EBT and be like, oh, see, if I was praying for EBT, I would pray <laughs> for bread and milk. Also, this is where we cut to the, like, sassy shopping at Goodwill montage. So, mm -hmm. like, we learned that Rachel's great because she made the best of not poverty by wearing hats. <laughs> right. This is such a rich people's version of a being poor montage. Oh, my God. Secondhand clothes, store-bought chicken wings. And that's it, by the way. That's that's the whole, like, her at eight that we got. She drew on a dresser, and they didn't have quite enough money for the teenage daughter to have car insurance, whatever. And now it's suddenly 1998 because we had to watch those scenes. We were already in the theater. Um, and we meet Rachel when she realizes that she didn't get into the school play. Right. And she is thin, very attractive, and popular. And the first thing that comes out of her fucking face is, boys will never think of me that way. And I was like, I'm sorry, actress that's playing Rachel. I am literally experiencing evidence otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted so badly for her to get side tackled by some actually fat person just like, oh yeah, is it hard, Rachel? Is it fucking hard? And then the movie just follows that fat person for the rest of the thing. Uh, I, I, I mean, I also had that moment where she's complaining and there were people who actually had problems and like, <laughs> at no point did she go, I should really listen to other people's perspectives that are right here. Nope. 
Right, and, th- and this movie did not need to surround her with people w- that had more significant problems with her. They chose to do that. Yeah, and, which also, it it really undermined any journey from a structural plot point uh, that this movie could succeed because I'm rooting for the other people. I was rooting right. for every other character. I was like... Come on, black football player who's new to the school. Get it together. (laughs) Yeah, this movie is like if Sophie's Choice had been mostly about her neighbor who was doing just fine. (laughs) Right, right. Just like, how are you doing, Allison? Pretty good, pretty good. I mean, it's tough out there. Yeah, I have to choose which kid I want to live. Right. I have a chemistry (laughs) test. So, like, I get it. Even. You, We are even. Sisters. Well, and I also love this is where she's like, she's turning to her friend going like, um, you know, but how in the world will I ever make the guy that I like notice me? And I'm like, you have boobs, but, but I, and I so wanted like her friend to pull out a zucchini, like start like, <laughs> demonstrating oral or something, but no, not in this fucking movie. Instead, like her suggestion is that they're going to sneak out and go partying with the boys and smoke cigarettes and drink alcohols. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that was their solution to to everything drinking <laughs> generic alcohol uh, it was it was also i was hoping her most interesting friend and i say interesting because she had blonde hair with like highlights of purple um, <laughs> a little purple like a little purple in there yeah felt like the rebellious kid in high school who was rebelling because she's like i don't have real problems but look at my hair and <laughs> i feel like it kind of satisfied that. Like I, I wanted that that friend to be a little more badass, but uh, yeah. her hair was just blonde and a pixie cut. Yeah, and that was that was supposed to be enough, I guess. Yeah, which you have to understand in Christian cinema is a visible labia piercing. In Christian cinema, <laughs> there are several people who walked out of the movie when they saw that pixie cut. People fainted on the main floor of Pure Flick Cinema. Yeah. This is brave filmmaking. Yeah, you, you know you're right. Uh, 50 short pixie cuts aren't appropriate unless you're 55 years old in the Christian community. Uh, and want to exactly. talk to a manager. Yeah, uh, and you want to talk to a manager and you're with your husband who you haven't slept with in six years. Like that because it's not his birthday. It's not well. It <laughs> hasn't been his birthday for six years, and you're six not sorry. Years. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> and you're not ashamed. <laughs> so yeah, they're they're at this like high school party dare risk behaviors like weird uh, beginning of Stranger Things like high school party, and we meet the popular boy who she wants to like like her, and look. Everyone in this movie is at least 30 and gorgeous. Yep. Cut. Really great looking, except for this character. Alex, yeah, except this guy. Alex is <laughs> probably in his like early 20s and looks a little like me. He looks like me with acne. And he's just lost in this sea of gorgeous adults. He's two feet shorter than all of them. And yet throughout it, everyone's like, oh man, Alex, what a dreamboat. And you keep flash cutting to him like eating a meatball sub by himself, being like, oh, <laughs> oh, we're just, a, we're just for everybody. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> my notes are filled with no one has ever wanted to fuck this guy. Yeah, I know. I am that guy. Well, and I just wanted to say as the woman on the show, maybe you just don't get how theater club works. That <laughs> girls in theater club just want to keep shooting lower and lower and lower. And they're they're going to be true. actresses one day. So they have to learn how to manage expectation early. In theater club, so just yeah. shoot real low, and it can only go up from there. That's it. I was in drama club in high school, and I can say that the major advantage was uh, everyone else being gay. Really helped. Really yeah, helped the game. <laughs> I, too, was in drama club. Unfortunately, the girls never got quite desperate enough. Um, and also, this is the first of three goddamn times that we are going to go like they, they go to Shakespeare here. And I and I am I have the biggest air quotes I can manage when I say this, because this is the worst possible Shakespeare quoting you can do without accidentally qu- quoting Biggie instead or something. Oh, my God. They literally 
three times in this movie, and we'll revisit it each time. They go, all the world's a stage. And then she goes, and men and women are players. And he's like, sure. <laughs> players. <laughs> Pl- play there. And then they it. enter and exit or something. Something. Yeah. Stuff. We, and also, it's such an inappropriate quote. Like, it's, it's a deeply tragic moment in Macbeth. So for them to be quoting it so casually, they act like it's the beginning of a comedy. It's like, hello, welcome to the comedy of Macbeth. Here you'll find men, women, right. they're all in the play. It's going to be grand fun. <laughs> But, of course, his response to this is, and I quote, you're, like, deep. Are you spiritual? (sighs) This is the first time I wrote, someone school shoot this bitch already in my notes, and it was not the last. Take out all the kids. I've never rooted for a school shooting harder. (laughs) The last time someone was more excited for a mass shooting in a theater, it was in Aurora. Oh God! I was ready for that kid. By the end of this movie, I was like, "If somebody doesn't come through here as dressed as a goddamn Joker and shoot me, I am not getting my money's worth out of this." <laughs> also, she has the there's the stupidest. Mo- I know it's a little thing, but I have to touch on it. She's like, "I'm sorry, I can't be fake the way my friends are." And the, like, what? What a bitchy thing to say! And, and that's the moment I in the movie I realized I was like, "Oh, you're alone because everyone hates you." <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, they hate you. Right. I get it. It's girl hate. We hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of it, the entire audience could hate along with them. Um, and, and so yeah, so she hangs out with the and again in every almost every scene in this movie, everyone but her is smoking and drinking. So this is like the movie based on what her mom swears is true. Um, so now we get like the night's over. She's sneaking back into her window and wouldn't you know it? Mom catches her sneaking in. I mean, first off she shouldn't be alive because they were drinking full bottles of vodka. No mixes. <laughs> right? She would be <laughs> dead of alcohol poisoning. She is six pounds. Yeah. yeah. Like th- no, I can't, I can't keep up with that shit. So <laughs> She should have fallen over as she entered. Like it should have been a comical prat fall, some a little bit of humor. <laughs> she vomits and shits herself. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the mom's line too when she comes in, she goes, "I prayed over pillows tonight." And I'm yeah. like, "And and yet you got the exact same results." What does that tell you, Ma? What does that tell well, you? Well, that also brings up the question: Did the mom not notice that the daughter was gone until the prayer was done? Was she like, "Dear Jesus, man, you are squishy tonight, Rachel"? Cut down <laughs> on the potatoes. <laughs> she also says one of my favorite things in the universe here. I'm going to use it forever. She looks at her daughter and she goes, "Are you buzzing?" I mean, it was the <laughs> '90s. Everyone was buzzing hard. That's true. Uh, that is true. We did okay. buzz back then. That's uh, before all the bees were killed off, Eli. You wouldn't remember that. Oh, I killed them with my cell phone. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, the gist of this scene, though, is that Rachel is now grounded for the entire rest of the year until she goes to the farm to hang out with Aunt Jesus and all her little Jesus cousins. In the middle of Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. So, and this is so fucking weird, like, just from a filmmaking perspective, right? Because now we're going to get this long scene where she goes to the farm in Louisiana to hang out with her cousins. We're going to spend eight or nine minutes with her getting indoctrinated here, and then we will never see any of these characters or refer back to them ever again. Absolutely not. But here's what's amazing. So she's like, we open on this scene, and she doesn't like Louisiana because it's a terrible state, and I can understand that. It's horrible. But but then when her cousin comes in and is like, hey, Rach, why don't you want to hang out with us? She's like, you wouldn't understand. My family's destroyed because my parents are dead. My parents are dead. My parents are divorced, okay? That's why I can't be happy. There has been no indication of this, but all of a sudden, about a third of the way in, the movie's just like, yeah, she's unhappy because of her parents' divorce, because you can't ever be happy again. (laughs) So many times in this movie, I just wrote, why are all these words consecutive? (laughs) She says, like, because she says to her, uh, her, her cousin, she goes, you wouldn't understand. Your family's perfect. And the f- cousin goes, they are not. And she goes, sorry. I'm sorry. I said that. Like, what are you sorry for? <laughs> that this is the big fucking issue. This is the wedge between you and your cousin is the perfection you claimed of her family. 
But then, even before she gets indoctrinated, there's this crazy moment where she goes, well, have you tried being super Jesus-y? And Rachel's (laughs) like, yeah, it's not for me. And she goes, no, no, no. Have you tried, like, doubling the fuck down on Jesus? (laughs) Look me. Look at me, Rachel. Have you tried doubling the fuck down? Well, to be clear, this is also a woman who had practically every part of her body covered, so what's not to be jealous? Like, I, first thing I noticed when Cousin came on the screen, I was like, oof, you are wearing a sack. You were yeah. wearing a sack. You're 90 pounds wearing a sack. Yep, you're you're damn near burkered. The yeah. burkas were in in the 90s, right? I don't, I don't know how much fashion. No, that's that's a Muslim world word uh, in, the, in Christian cinema. Uh, well, we call it uh, modesty. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. right, right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's a completely different thing. Totally different thing. And, and, and this is so hard for me not to see. Like, how do they not, in their movie, recognize that what we're seeing is a confused child being preyed upon by a cult? Yeah, and it's they have happy music, but this is so clearly indoctrination. If there was a montage of happy music as, like, she got abused by a teacher and then she wrote in her diary about how much she was in love with him, we wouldn't be like, and now it's the hope and the fear and the Maryland and Maryland. <laughs> But because this is, like, an acceptable way to abuse your kids, we're just like, hey, look at her jump in a lake. Yeah, right. Right, so yeah, she takes Jesus into her vagina or however it works. I don't know how it works for girls. Um, it, it's a butt thing. It, it, okay, it's, it's a butt thing for everybody. Okay, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I know that's what the priest told me. Yeah, uh, it's non-gendered. It's non-gendered. Oh, nice. I'll be super good at getting into Jesus when the time comes, guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll sit straight down on the Lord. There's a Jesus-sized hole in your ass. Yeah, exactly. And of course, this is where Aunt Jesus gives her the journal and i will never forgive aunt jesus for this gift (laughs) if it wasn't for aunt jesus we wouldn't have this goddamn movie but you know now we're done with these characters wipe them from your memory forever yep they are gone yeah it is now august of 1998 the first day of her fateful junior year at columbine high school right and she's nice to the downs kid because she's a christian only a yeah, exactly. An atheist would never be nice to the dead. Otherwise, kid. she would have. Last year, she would have stabbed him in his fucking heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody knows uh, uh, you only have uh, pity uh, if you're a Christian. I mean, that's the ac- emotion she was actually accessing. Can we point out they use this kid as a fucking prop? He doesn't have a person. They don't develop his character. They we don't learn anything about him. He's simply a prop for the quote unquote good characters in this movie to walk over to and be like, "Oh my god, can you believe I'm talking to you? Like, look at me talking <laughs> right. to you." And he's like, "Do you want to know anything about me?" And he and they're like, "No, we're done now." And cut. Great, get it away. <laughs> Ew. It was so ableist. <laughs> I, I had that moment of like, oh, they could have made like a, a like a puppet, like a giant muppet, <laughs> right? And right. just been like, uh, you know, this is just as good as the stand-in. Um, <laughs> like my heart goes out to that actor because, dear, dear God, no one deserved to be in a movie this shit. No kidding. No but kidding. No one he deserved to play better. a human puppy in this movie. This <laughs> well, <that's, laughs> exactly. Uh, so listen, Austin, we're super excited to have you in the film, but they wanted to know if in between takes they could put you in a crate. How do you feel about that? <laughs> oh God. You okay with that? Um, it's already in your writer. So just like deal. <laughs> <laughs> And now we get to meet KJ, the black character. This is 50% of the time we will see him, so so (laughs) him. Yeah, we'll meet him for a brief second. And then we get, because like in the background of this movie, there are actually interesting characters, right? Because we have the school shooters in this movie. So we get this scene of them getting bullied by the jocks. Um, and and it, 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 it this movie could make a really important statement about bullying at this point, 
But it really kind of doesn't. It really kind of just goes like, oh, that little asshole probably deserves it, huh? Because he's going to shoot everybody later. Yeah. Well, and also the bullying is so unrealistic and insane. It's like a they set up a Rube Goldberg machine with him at right. the beginning of it, like a dog barks and it sets off a candle which goes up his ass. It's just totally insane. <laughs> you know, they they cover a hallway yes, with baby oil bowling. and throw him down it, and that's it. That was the whole plan. And, and, and my favorite part is. Where's the janitor? Let's bring the janitor who has to clean up baby oil on linoleum. That's, that's like, you could, just, if they had just left that out, that would have done as much damage as any school shooting. Uh, right? It's linoleum and baby oil. And then uh, uh, on top of that, when they, like, I also couldn't help think, I was like, this is a nice enough school that a teacher should do a job like not a single teacher did a fucking job they were just like no la 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 i don't hear it well i will say like that was my high school experience that teachers basically ignored the bullying because the attitude at, at least when i was in high school which was right about this this time a little before the attitude at least at my high school was oh yeah you know they got their those kids need to man up anyway they need to learn to you know to 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 stand up for themselves so they need a little bullying i thought that might have been the most realistic thing in this movie the way the teachers and administrators completely ignored the bullying oh no they yelled at me all the time when i was a bully it was rough uh, I went to <laughs> private school, so I was the black kid. <laughs> no, I, I see. They carried her around on a palanquin. <laughs> I bet. I'm fine, guys. I can walk. No, no, no. We got you. We have to make sure you're in all the pictures. Well, and I, w- I was in all the school materials. I was well, in yeah, every right, photo right, shoot. Exactly. Guys, it- I'm not in the chess club. Yeah, but just get in the picture. Just get in there. Come on. <laughs> And then we get the scene that just completely because I was expecting awful. I didn't think this movie would be more awful than I was expecting. But now we get this random fucking scene where we learn that the true culprit in the Columbine shooting was Charles Darwin. There's literally an entire scene where the history teacher is just explaining that Hitler was inspired by Darwin and Dylan and Eric are just like, Hmm, Hitler. That sounds like a great idea. Hmm, Darwin. And I want to point out, <laughs> but because we didn't manage, we didn't mention this when we were doing um, the the stupid Ben Stein movie last week. I want to point out that like. It, it, on the Origin of Species was one of the many books that the Nazis burned. You know, and banned. So, like, nah, uh but still, yeah, yeah. The, 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 this is this is, and, and that's the, there is absolutely no other purpose for this scene. It's just like you said. It's just a history teacher standing up there saying Darwin uh, inspired Hitler to go kill people. Now we'll have the next scene. But I, they, if he had at least used, I don't know what they call a smart word like eugenics, it would have at least elevated that moment of conversation to, okay, that's at least a, 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 almost a thread, not a significant one, but like... Right, but at least you, at least we would have felt like they were trying. Yeah, it was like a wink and a nod to people who to believe in evolution that like, we know you, we see what you're doing, you are yeah. Columbine. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Take your lumps, guys. It's all your fault. And now we get her um, meeting with the dorky Asian kid because apparently her thing in high school was to hang out in the little spot where all the smokers smoke cigarettes and not smoke cigarettes. Her mom swears. Yeah. So so she's just sitting back there and this kid, this Asian kid's smoking and she goes like, basically, this is the line. She goes, you ever feel like you're going to get school shooting to death this year? And the Asian kid's like, nope. And they're like, OK, well, that's a scene. Really, that is it. And that is one of the many times she will turn to another character and be like, do you ever feel like you're going to die? And they're like, no, man, you're weird. And she's like, (laughs) foreshadowing. For what? Nothing. (laughs) This is a movie. (laughs) Uh, I I also realized that, like, it was edgy to have all those actors smoke. But then I had that moment of I was like, oh, it feels like a stereotypical thing. Having the only Asian character be a chain smoker. (laughs) And then I felt a little better when I just realized everybody smoked. 
Where was this place on campus that they let that many people smoke? Oh, right? Somewhere was smelling. Like some teacher uh, apparently was sitting in their classroom and like, I don't give a fuck. Like <laughs> smoke. Like why didn't anybody <laughs> just light up a doobie at that rate? It's like, if I'm going to smoke and they ain't saying nothing, might as well smoke some weed. <laughs> also, the school had no drug dealers. Come on. You well, not that we dealer. saw, not that we saw. Believe me, I was looking for drugs by the end of this fucking movie. Uh, <laughs> I, Noah's trying to buy drugs from the movie. Hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Okay, at least he's going to draw off your cigarette, man. But yeah, no, I thought the same thing when we first saw the Asian kid. But as it turns out, every single person in this movie except for her is a smoker. It's fucking amazing. Um, and so now we have to go to advanced drama where her crush will be. Um, and this is the bar- part where like she's drawing and the, and the teacher's like, hey, that's a nice drawing. But this is an art class as just so that her crush can be like, actually, drama is an art. And I'm like, fuck you, dude. You know what she meant. Well, but what's insane is the teacher goes, good point, Alex. You're the teacher now. Like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> right? uh, all I could think is I was like, does she want to, like, hook up with Alex, too? Like, <laughs> she's, she was about it. She was like, you're right. Here's my number. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> Um, but th- this, the real key thing in this scene, of course, is that in drama class, apparently they partner up the juniors with senior mentors and guess who her mentor is? Squee! And hey, if you don't care about this part of the plot, neither did we, but this is the plot and the point of this show is where we describe the plot of the movie. So fuck you for making us watch it. <laughs> How you feel about that? Yeah, it's- you don't care about who her mentor is. <laughs> Neither did we. But I was in the theater alone at Forty Second Street, trying to listen through the wall to the people who were listening to Tyler Perry's "Boo." That sounded funny. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how bad this movie is. He was jealous of the Tyler Perry audience. Holy shit! Yeah, I, I at least thought I was like, I don't know. At least it's a room full of black people having fun. Like- <laughs> Oh, for fuck's sake. So now we're going to go to Shep's party because, again, like every third scene in this movie is a kid party. Um, and, of course, once again, everyone is smoking and drinking. And this is the first time I realized this about this character. Eventually it becomes unavoidable. But in each consecutive scene, she is wearing an even goofier hat. Like that's part of her yeah. thing or whatever. By the end of it, it's 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 literally beanie copter, beer helmet and scuba mask. I have a theory about this hat thing. I think it's this. The white people in this movie look so similar that they had to put an identifying hat on one of them just so that your eyes could follow. That is how I found this character in every scene. I'd be like, she's the one with the hat. There she is. Found her. It's the world's easiest game of Where's Waldo, and it is the only reason I would have spotted her in any of the scenes in this movie. Right, and now we have to ca- dig into this character, um, uh, uh, Celine, the, the slutty friend who's off getting yes. AIDS at the party. With the pixie cut. Slutty as in she, like, tongue kisses. Yeah, right, right, exactly, yeah, exactly. a guy. And basically, Rachel runs up to her and she's like, Celine, be careful, if you see a dick, you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is true. I'm undead. I've seen so many dicks. Uh, so many. D- I'm sorry about that, by the way. You texted okay. me what time are we recording, and I sort of got like a vibe off of that and yeah. sent you 175 pictures of other people's dicks. Yeah, I mean, but by the end, it was like beautiful noise of cock. So it was worth it. Thank you. Yeah, that's the She's thing about Eli. You at just my have trial. to wait through the through the dick pics. Eventually, they get good. Um, so, and then of course she goes off to talk to her crush Alex, and just when she thinks things are going good, more cleavagey girl shows up, and he ignores her. So, you know, problems. Yeah, and then we cut to like, uh, then we go back to her house, and we get stepdad getting home. Yes, there's a stepdad. Keep up. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and literally this scene only exists for her younger brothers who have aged and are now different actors and multiplied and are maybe <laughs> twins to turn to the stepdad's like, hey, uh, you kids, and the he's just like, you're not my real dad, and then they're just like, good, good. Yeah. 
Well, and also she has to ask if if she can have his spare car. Again, remember how poor we are? Sure sucks to be poor. Can I have your spare car? Yeah, I, I also uh, appreciated how little we saw of this poor dad who married into 15 kids and counting. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> and like just like had no idea of like, oh, you want my car now? Fuck you. And then I like got upset because I was like, oh, this is the moment you're you're like flirting with your stepdad. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> wrong. That is how the scene plays. She does oh, yeah. have a moment where she's like, mm, and it's like, this is not how one talks to their stepdad. Yeah. She was like giving Joe eyes and like grabbing him and being like, uh, I want to smile. Give me that smile. Like. She was like, it just felt a little too flirty. Yeah, she climbs halfway into his lap at one point in this scene. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, get, come on, smile all over my face. <laughs> a little on my chest, too. A little on my and chest. And you can see the other actor is uncomfortable. Yes, like, you can right. actually see the adult actor is like, I thought I played her dad. What? <laughs> I, gonna be honest, I only got one page in this script, so I didn't view the whole. I thing. said yes way too quick. It's hard to get them. Christian movies like I like. Everyone in this movie had that thought at some fucking point. Um, so yeah, so she wants the car, he won't give her the car, and then we cut to her writing in her journal, and then just to remind you again that there are more interesting people in this movie, we also cut to like evil killer kid reading uh, about social... Diatribes Volume 1. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's reading Mein Kampf, right? I, I think, or he's reading something about social Darwinism or on the origin of species, and he's just drawing little swastikas on it. I don't know. I, I mean, it was it it was just so many swastikas that I was like, uh, the movie at that point punched me in the face with like, it's like Hitler, get it? Yeah. <laughs> Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. Oh, in your theater, did someone come around and pass out swastika cookies every time those kids appeared on screen? <laughs> Because they no. did that in mine. Oh, they just drank every time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, of course, we've got to go to the coffee shop so that we can see that she works, too. You know, that's like another boring thing that teenage white girls do. So let's watch her do that. Um, and she works at a coffee shop. And when we meet her, her boss is telling her to go shoo off the homeless lady that just came in. I want to talk about this homeless lady's costume. Oh, please. This homeless lady is wearing a slightly less realistic chimney sweep costume than I was in at the live show at QED. <laughs> she has smudges of soot yes. and like weird cloth gloves. I expected when she walked over to be like, hey, you can't stay here for her to be like, oh, come on, Gavna. And then some cartoon penguins to pop up from under the table. Oh, let us stay. <laughs> we were about that close. I, I also had that thought of uh, she she had maybe I've lived in New York too long, but I was like, where's your shit? You're homeless. <laughs> yeah, right. Bring your shit inside. That's irresponsible. Where's your giant cart of plastic bags? I was like, that's irresponsible. Go get your shit. Also, while we're having a I've lived in New York too long talk. Did anyone but me have the moment where, like, the other one walked over to her? And I've seen homeless people who look like that woman's costume. And when you walk over and offer them food, it's never good. They, like, <laughs> reach into their pants. They pull out a handful of shit. They smear it on the wall. And they start yelling about Hillary Clinton's email. <laughs> this is not. They don't just go like, oh, I would love a coffee and a pastry. Thank you so much. <laughs> I've lived in Manhattan for a decade. That never ends well. I stopped doing that after six months. <laughs> I, I. I, I've also like seen that happen on a train and my favorite moment that I've ever seen it happen someone went up to a person and they started like uh, acting a fool and then a social worker walked over and was like I'm a social worker I can help I saw the act drop and I was like that woman needs to get her ass to Broadway because that was the best goddamn performance I've ever seen <laughs> so just know you don't know I mean, all the world's a stage. Oh, shit. You're welcome. Oh, full You're circle. Welcome. Nailed we have it. a strong anti-homeless message on this show, <laughs> and we really try to keep it up. So, and of course, again, moral of the story of this scene, 
she goes to shoo the homeless lady off. Another nice lady comes and buys her coffee so she can stay. And I guess we're just supposed to assume that the lady who bought the coffee was a Christian because that teaches Rachel that she should always be Christian. Not that she should always be good to people, but that she should always be Christian. And we learn that from the over the voiceover yeah. is like, I need to be more Christian. And that woman's like, so my name's Zelda Rosenberg. Can I get you a coffee? More Christian. <laughs> And now we're going to meet one of the most bizarre characters in this in this film. We're going to meet friendly bum Nate. So we cut to Bible study or whatever, and there's this guy who's all tattooed up and shit, doesn't look like he belongs there. And, and Rachel sees him stealing pizza, like putting pizza in his backpack. So she goes to introduce herself, and he, like, takes off. Oh, but Nate is a good-looking dude. Can we take a moment? I spent much of this movie comforting myself with Nate's pectoral muscles and abs. <laughs> I'm just saying, if anyone was going to convince me to go into the showers at Dachau, it's going to be oh, Nate. Oh, God, do it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, maybe he gets in with me. We get soapy. Who knows what happens? Uh, uh, the whole time <laughs> I was thinking, I cared more about the will they, won't they between Nate and Rachel. And I was like, come on. Yeah, right. <laughs> come on. Let's see this movie. Uh, yeah. uh, it'd be like, uh, the Christian version of Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, or Christian yeah. Lady and the Tramp. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll take it. But. But she notices that he steals pizza, so she hunts him down like Liam Neeson. Yeah, right. I wanted her to appear behind him and snap his neck. That is what the music and the the shot was like. She was just going to slowly lower herself from the ceiling like goddamn Splinter Cell. Oh, and that's not the first thing I... I as she was, like, stalking him, uh, uh, like, Predator... Uh, the first thing I noticed, I was like, she like crossed over to the other side of the tracks. I was like, oh, that's where all the people of color are hiding. Yeah. In the shadows. <laughs> and I was like, uh-uh, you lost me. I see you, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. I know what's going on here. Thanks, Pure Flicks. I know where I could shoot my movie. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I, I, I love, too, that she like basically follows this guy down heroin alley. Now, first of all, I'm willing to bet you could walk around in Columbine, fucking Colorado, or wherever the hell this is, for a really long time before you find an alley with seven homeless people living in it. But also, do you think this is a good message to send to the teenage girls watching that, like, hey, if you see a mysterious guy stealing shit, follow him down a dark alley? Yes, especially at ReasonCon. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> when, when you're a woman, um, you remember, you're always supposed to follow a good man. That's what the good book taught me. So you got to oh, follow. You got to hunt them down no matter where they go. She confronts him and she's immediately, immediately, she's like, will you be my big brother? And I just wrote in my notes, I am into this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I had the I had a slightly different moment. Because I saw the, and I'm going to fix you. And I was like, oh, they're going to get together. Because she's like, what do you want? How can I make you happy? How can I satisfy your needs? Baby, I'm going to take care of you. Let me suck that dick. <laughs> and then um, I woke up from the fantasy and the movie was still going. And she brought in the bag of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, wait, yeah. I, I just It's a tiny moment, but it's so fantastic. They go to this bodega and he's going to steal, but he picks the actor picks the largest, most unwieldy <laughs> right. box yes. to try and steal. So he just like barely fits it into his North Face jacket. Got, like, like he just eight boxes of pop tarts. He's got a carton of them in there. Or something. He's got a grocery cart. He's trying to like stuff down his pants. <laughs> Yeah, but she's clearly like, this guy's never stolen a thing. Because she's like, well, what else do you want? Because she's going to buy it for him. And he gets the chips. I'm like, you can't shoplift a bag of chips. They're too noisy, you dick. Anyway. Yeah. Also, what is she spending this job money on? Does she just, like, do... Is this her MO? She's like, I don't know. I follow weird dudes and buy them food. It's my <laughs> thing. It's how I get off. Uh, <laughs> it's a fetish. Sure. I call it Christianity. <laughs> Now let me watch you eat those chips. Tell me how sick your mom is. <laughs> Feed that yeah. heroin yeah. addict mother. Yeah. Feed it. I want to yeah. pray for you. Oh, yeah, I'm getting down on my knees praying so hard. Let oh, me touch that shoulder. Don't touch me. Oh, tell me how nice I am to that retard. Tell me how nice I am. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, and of course, she wants him to come to Bible study with her next Wednesday. That'll be important, at least in the relative sense of like things in this movie. Um, so then we're going to head back to school uh, so that we can see that her friends, her mean girl friends, make fun of the fat chick for having poor person clothes, but she's too Christian to do something like that. And I would even say it's not the fat chick; it's the first like average size woman. Yeah, right. Seen. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. it's the first time because all I've seen at this point are like ninety pound women who are like, "God doesn't want me to eat," and like you see one girl <laughs> who's like, "I don't know, I like cheeseburgers." And, like, it's the perspective of fat. So I, I, I'm going to claim a little bit of body positivity and just say, I don't know, she should just eat the, the leftover girls. I mean, they didn't have much of a personality anyway. <laughs> Exactly. She's also the one who is in high school. So when you watch this, which in sort of a meta sense, it is 30 something year old actresses like being like, look at that fucking 15 year old. And you're like, you guys are grown ups. You guys are grown ups. And this is the best you can do. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, and this is also where we get a little bit more de like this. She throws this line out to to her slutty friend. She goes like, uh, hey, Celine, is there anything I can pray for you about? Because now Celine is boy crazy. And the only reason that you could possibly want to, like, have sex or have like uh, uh, a foreplay is because you're crying out for help from your Christian friends. She's snapping. She's doing that that cutting replacement thing where you snap your wrist with a rubber band Oh, and she okay. notices that she's got the rubber band on her wrist. And apparently she's snapping because she saw the walking dude's penis. That's like a <laughs> damn deep cut. I don't know why we're supposed to think. But, like, she's so scarred by making out with boys at a high school party <laughs> that she's, like, this close to cutting. And she's like, hey, can I pray for you about that? And she's like, no, actually, if you could talk to me or be a good friend or alert a counselor, can I pray for you about it? <laughs> right. She gave her her option. <laughs> Eat these chips I bought you. <laughs> well, I pray for you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what do you need? Here's some chips. I'm going to pray for you. Oh, yeah. Pray so fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then literally in the background, and this is very important, in the because this scene is happening in the foreground, but in the background, we see the Columbine shooters getting bullied again. So it's just the scenery of this movie. Yes. Dylan and Eric, like, getting wedgies. I, I, I think that was the scene where I had that moment of, oh, those poor Columbine shooters. Yeah, right. <laughs> Somebody needs to get them, like, some help. And then I was like, all right, but they're kind of Nazis. That's what the movie keeps telling me. I was like, <laughs> but they're getting bullied. I believe in, I I don't know, murder and shit. If I was getting bullied, I wanted, listen, by the end, I was thinking, I don't know, those Columbine shooters are kind of cute. And then I was like, <laughs> all right, but they're the Columbine shooters. I don't know. I had an emotional journey with them. <laughs> Yeah, my my sympathies were completely misplaced in this fucking movie. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, just in case you were wondering, it's not just Charles Darwin that drove him to murder. It was also video games. This is also this is where we cut to them playing a first person shooter at home and going like, mm, if only this was a school. <laughs> These video games sure are making me violent. Me too, yeah. bro. <laughs> me too. Right. And cut. And I love it. It's like th this literally happened like in the in the writing room for this movie. Somebody's like, OK, evolution, video games, not enough Jesus. Is there anything else we could blame the ready availability of guns and unlimited ammunition to children on? No. All right. Well, we're done with this here script then. <laughs> like, like Congratulations. They're going so out of their way to blame everything except guns. For the fucking school shooting. Yeah. We're not, we're never going to broach that. Yeah. Ex everything except the two sports bags full of guns these kids will do with, use to do the school shooting. Yeah. Is to blame. Well, I, I would even say, uh, just, I don't know, intervention sooner for the horrific bullying. <laughs> that would help. Like, of any kind. Or the cry for help we're going to get later in this movie. We'll get to it, but there's such a clear moment where the kids yes. are like, hey, 
we're about to school shoot everybody, and the teacher's like, ugh, next project. Yeah, exactly. Swipe left. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But instead of, again, instead of following the interesting plot line, it's now time to go to Bible breakthrough class to see if Nate the bum showed up to, uh, uh, to, to Jesus with her like he said he would. I loved this scene. This is the <laughs> realest scene in the movie. And oh, it was I so good. Every second of it. So she, she's like, oh, Nate didn't come. So she hunts Nate down and gets him to confess like, his problems to her. And this is exactly what happens. This is exactly what happens. Keisha, I want you to tell me you have a physics test. So just tell me you have a physics test. I have a physics test. Yeah, my mom's a heroin whore. I'm homeless and I survive only on like the blood of my enemies that I can, you know, if I can kill them with a bottle before they can kill me. <laughs> uh, uh, but are you okay? <laughs> Exactly what happens. That is exactly exactly what happens in this movie. He goes on this long monologue about his mom being addicted to heroin and living on the street. And like he didn't say anything, she goes, Are you okay? And you can see the actor look into the camera like fucking Jim from the office and be like, This bitch. (laughs) No. Are we all on the same script here? Uh, It it, it was just. It was literally the dumbest question. <laughs> like, cause, uh, the, I feel like the, the first draft of this script was like, so, so what do you want me to do? And then they were like, no, it's too cold, too cold. Let's, <laughs> let's add, are you okay? That's friendlier. That's more inviting. Yeah. I feel like the first draft was, ew, story topper. <laughs> <laughs> It's advanced physics. I didn't even say I, that. It's, advanced it's college physics. placement. I, I think it was, ew, your mom's a whore. <laughs> oh, shit. That's like a mean thing to say. You shouldn't tell people that. No, but she's a literal whore. Yeah, right. shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, that's gross. Don't tell people. Well, and even this movie had to like acknowledge what a fucked up thing to say that is, because the the actor just storms out. I don't even know if he was supposed to. It was just like, okay, this movie's too stupid now. I've got to go. But, of course, all the kids stop him before he can go, and they all offer to help him because he's white. I mean, I mean, cause let's, let's be realistic here, right? Let's imagine that they brought a homeless black guy in, and he said, yeah, well, you know, my mom's addicted to crack, and then, then I gotta go do this, and I'm, I'm sucking dick for money, and whatever, and I'm living entirely off of the peanuts I pick out of other people's turds or whatever and shit. Do you think all the little white kids would go, well, you can stay at my house? No, they would have shot him for going to his pockets too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stand your ground. <laughs> Unfucking real. Anyway, so and then we get another quick snippet of the uh, the Columbine shooters or whatever. Um, and and but but forget about all of that interesting stuff. It's time to meet Rachel, meeting the new kid in school whose parents might be getting a divorce. Oh yeah, uh, I I at least this movie has magical white people who solve problems. That's that's the one thing that felt <laughs> yeah, like that's comfort. Yeah, that she was just popping into people's life. I was like, I got all the answers. Because, you know, my parents are, like, divorced. (laughs) Yeah. Now, Rachel seems pretty convinced that once you get divorced, you never find love again and you're an empty, barren shell. Keisha, you have some experience with this. What's it like being in the third or fourth circle of hell? Um, listen, (laughs) you're surrounded by dicks. You just see them all the time. And you, like, don't realize you're undead because there's just so many dicks coming at you. I I, have apologized. (laughs) I mean, are you in hell? Or, like, is this a fuck party filled with dicks? And, like, you oscillate between the two. Well, I think you just described Eli's heaven. So, you know, it's all a matter of perspective. Well, one person's hell is another's (laughs) heaven. All the world's a stage. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, speaking of which, that's the next place this movie goes, is to butcher some more Shakespeare, where she goes to meet with her mentor. And now we get a them bonding montage. Oh, for fuck's sake, yes. The first of, like, three montages that we get of the two of them. 
Um, and, and of course, like in this montage, we're seeing the two of them get closer and closer, but we also see that bum Nate is now a regular church goer. That's important or whatever. Right. And we see, we should point this out because it happens in the movie, but it doesn't matter and nobody should care. Alex is getting her ready to audition for the school play. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, and then this, this montage wraps up with the Columbine shooters, uh, talking about like they're going to naturally select their classmates. It's, it's people who have never heard or know anything about evolution trying to do evolution catchphrases. I'm going to make like a finch and slowly of us. I'm Hitler. <laughs> So stupid. I wrote in my notes, let's totally villainize those kids. Those those kids don't have a story. They're just made out of evil and gummy worms. Uh, yeah, right. Right. It, what, but I think if that if that was the story they were trying to tell, stay with me. If that was the story they were trying to tell, I'd be fine with it. Don't show them getting bullied. Don't make me <laughs> right, feel right. for them. Don't make me go, oh no. Oh no, you're <laughs> Poor getting little bullied. Nazis. Yeah, and by the way, the actual line here that the kid throws out is, we'll, we just need to kick natural selection up a few notches. That's the actual Amazing. goddamn line. And of course, also, hooray, she got the part. Um, so now we're back to Bible study again, because, you know, three Bible study scenes in one movie is just not enough. Um, so this is where we get her and, and Nate the bum bonding a little more. Uh, he, um, she, she gives him a journal cause he got a job and this is a stupid movie. Right. And he shows her his grandfather's dog tags. And there's this great moment where he goes, these are my grandfather's dog tags. He fought in world war two. And I wanted him so badly to be like on the German side, but he fought really hard. <laughs> like everyone was brave. <laughs> He's got a lot of Eagles around our house. But they're not American eagles. You can tell. <laughs> you can tell. Also, like he talks about the Rothschilds a lot. Have you heard about this? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Also, this is where like Nate starts to like worry about her boyfriend, and it's so clearly because Nate wants to fuck her, but this movie doesn't acknowledge that. You know, and he's like, well, uh, Rachel, why don't you invite this boyfriend of yours to church? And she's like, well, I don't know if he'll hate me when he finds out how Christian I am, because that's a thing that happens in our fictional universe, that people get hated for being Christian in a country that's 75 percent Christian in Colorado. Yeah, right, right. I mean, listen, I just was sad he didn't have his shirt off while he was giving this whole lecture. Oh, you and me both. Because every time he moved his arms, one of his pecs would do that delicious little jump thing. And I was just like, mm, I'll share a journal with you, Nate. <laughs> yeah. And then I got very sad because I was like, all her sexual energy was wasted on Alex and her stepdad. Not this delicious <laughs> Nate guy. All her sexual energy is wasted on me wearing pizza as a face mask and her father. <laughs> <laughs> the Anna Bosnick story. Oh, there you go. It's about damn time. And then we're going to get her birthday party so that we can see that dad gave her that Acura after all. So, you know, problems. So she takes it out for some everybody's drunk but me partying. Right. And then we get what I think is actually the hardest part to watch of this movie. We get to watch high schools have a what are we talk. Oh I my don't like God. having this talk when uh. I've had it with people I'm fucking. Right. So I sure as hell don't want to watch high schoolers have it. Although I will admit bonus points to whoever wrote Alex's dialogue because that like we have an exclusive heart connection. <laughs> I think that's. That's some solid shit right there. Someone's been told that. Someone was taking notes. Yeah, well, one of the things I would say is I was like, that's the one excerpt every teenager should see, just so they can get more and not in the slut shaming. Be like, I don't know, we have a heart connection now. Let's mash some genitals. Like, <laughs> but, like, part of me was like, so all they've done is kissed. I doubt he's even touched boob. And, like, every, everybody knows now that the what are we conversation is coded for, like, be my boyfriend. Um, and as we've seen before, people are like, 
why don't people like me? It's like, well, Rachel, you're a little controlling and off-putting because you can't just let things like, I don't know, be. Right. <laughs> and, and I want to say this kid tap dances around that question like a goddamn champ. I was impressed with that. Like you said, that was the only really good writing this movie ever did. Yeah, a dozen women have had that conversation with me, and none of them did it as well as Alex did. If they had told me that we had an exclusive heart connection, I would have their names tattooed on my lower back right now. <laughs> Usually just told me how funny I was. Oh, uh, is that That's tattooed on your did. lower back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm funny. <laughs> That'd be a great tattoo for you, actually. Yeah. Courier new. Courier new. <laughs> and then we get uh, a little bit more with uh, Nate the bum, um, you know, with, with uh, like him bringing more bums to church now. Basically, this is like another mini montage or whatever. Um, and it, it, this is, and I only bring it up because this is where she asks him to pray for her that she won't drink. Oh my like, God. They're just writing Creed lyrics back and forth. Oh, for fuck's sake, this was so painful. Yeah, because this is, the, I guess they're sharing the journal, like writing to each other in the journal or whatever, and we're listening to that. I, maybe I, like, died inside at that moment, but uh, how? How did they share a fucking journal? Where <laughs> was this journal? How? Okay, like, we meet every Thursday, you write on it on Wednesdays, and then every, well, you hand it to me, and then I meet up. There's like a whole calendar schedule. All right, yeah. apparently you guys haven't been as deep in the friend zone as I have. You just have it in one place, and then, you know, she gets to take it once in a while, and then you get to pretend like you give a shit, and then she gets to pretend like she's going to fuck you eventually if you keep doing this. And it's, it's, it's actually fairly easy. Is this a real thing? Is this a real thing people do? Oh, absolutely. It might be. Absolutely. I did this with a number of girls that pretended like at least kind of that may, they might want to eventually fuck me. I did this quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, uh, how, what percentage fucked you? Zero. Zero percentage. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, exactly. if you're exchanging <laughs> journals, it's <laughs> like it's like I can't even be stand to have coffee with you. Yeah, right, right. I don't even feelings. want to have a conversation with you. Where the fuck were you when I was 14, Keisha? I could have used this advice when I was 14. Well, luckily, based on my handwriting and my spelling, nobody ever asked me to do that. Because <laughs> they would have gotten the journal back and been like, Chinfik? And I would have been like, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, Noah will fix it in post. Who's <laughs> Noah? Ah, give it a couple decades. <laughs> And then, of course, we get the scene where, like, dad's cleaning up her car and finds the empty vodka bottle. Oh, no. I also, and then, so the parents give her the talking to. They're like, hey, we're worried about your drinking. You should quit the activity that has nothing to do with drinking. Yeah, what? Okay. Yeah, she says she should quit the play. I, I have right. no idea why. So she storms out. She's like, I didn't ask to be born again. <laughs> I also love too because she's like she's like um, the mom's like you need to stop going to all of these parties and the girl's response is but mom those are the people that need me to witness to them the most and I'm like this girl actually had her mother convinced that she went to keggers to Jesus the kids who were drinking right listen I I, I want to take a moment and just offer this up if there's a heaven. We need to not go there. We need to go to hell where Rachel actually is. <laughs> she was an expert liar. No I mean, shit. Mom, I don't smoke. I just hang out with smokers. Mom, I don't hook up with boys. I just stay out till three in the morning and have pool parties getting wasted. Yeah, I show back <laughs> up soaking fucking wet because I was having a platonic relationship with a boy. Yeah. And all our clothes were on. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> Always. All <yes>. of them. <laughs> but they take away her car, or her car keys, and apparently we give a fuck or something. Um, but not for long, because now we're going to go back to Bible study so that Nate the Bum can give her his grandfather's dog tags as a gift. Which is so bizarre. If my wife walked in the room right now and asked for one of the heirlooms that I got from my grandfather or my father, I'd be like, no, darling, you can't have those. Those are family heirlooms. Would you like any other thing? 
But he just volunteers. He's like, hey, this journal sharing is going really well, and I want to take it to the next level. Have the only remnants of my family history. I won't regret this. <laughs> I thought that was for sure the moment that they were going to fuck. I was like, yeah, uh, and now they fuck. Nope. No, I was hoping no. for it. Yeah, yeah. I, and I don't he, even think hey, this movie ever realized that we would want the two of them to wind up together. I would. I, I mean, was moved by it. He could they, still fuck me. The two best looking characters. Uh, yeah, we want we want them to have sex. Yeah. Well, I wanted it, I wanted him to fuck Celine more, but you know, I, I have a thing oh, for the pixie cut. Yeah, or a little threesome thing. Oh, uh, all right. Listen, all I right. have a whole tumbler dedicated <laughs> to what I wanted to happen in this movie, but none of it did. <laughs> How long did it take you to set up? Um, like six to seven hours. My notes took 30 seconds. <laughs> you can't tell. They're all misspelled. Yes. I, I fixed I just I slap that. the keyboard until I have the same length as Noah. <laughs> <laughs> also, and this is, this is going to be a recurring thing here. Uh, we have to have one of our several, like, where, like, Nate is worried about her boyfriend because he's not a Christian. And and she said he goes like, well, is this Alex guy a Christian? And she goes, no, he's really spiritual. And then Nate's like, oh, fuck that guy. But like, what was what was spiritual supposed to be a code word for in this movie? I could never quite figure that out. Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, oh, spiritual, huh? Does this family own like a lot of media companies, and newspapers, maybe? Rigging the election. <laughs> How come your profile picture is a frog? That's not answering the question. Answer the question. <laughs> and I just really care about honesty in video game reporting. <laughs> they they didn't want to complicate the message, and they were like, "Ah, uh, he's Jewish. Uh, make him spiritual." <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, there was one person in that writer's room that was like, we ain't never going to talk about the menace of the Jew, are we? We ain't never going to talk about <laughs> Fuck it, I'm taking a break. Storms out of the room. We're just going to make Man. the Nazis seem like the bad guys throughout, aren't we? <sighs> <laughs> and then we get opening night of the play. Now, we I don't think we've given enough uh, a, a time in this review to the play because apparently this is a very important thing in this movie. And the play ends and uh, Nate's there and he's all like dressed up in a fucking tux for her school play, <laughs> which yes. is weird. And he comes up and now he's supposed to be older than her, right? She said, you're my big brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can assume he's considerably older. And he walks up to her and this Alex kid and he's like, good job. And he gives her the flowers and she's like, thanks, this is Alex. And Alex's like, how did you like the play? And he's like, fuck you. I will choke you. I am a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a grown up and this relationship's appropriate. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, right. but, but I want to rewind it back to the play for one moment. That take was there. Play got a standing ovation. And I'm still oh mad at that. <laughs> it was the most stiff acting I've ever seen. And yeah, and they only show you forty seconds. Yeah, and it was bad. And they were smoking <laughs> in the play. All like, the kids had cigarettes. Every single one of them was holding a cigarette in the school play. Well, and it makes you wonder, it's like, in addition to school shootings, shouldn't they worry about lung cancer <laughs> right. and mouth cancer? Like, Not for this cause, year. Because that's clearly killing more people <laughs> in Columbine. 13 of those kids had nothing to worry about. <laughs> well, 12 and a teacher. And, and, and because this movie can't think of anything else to shoot, after the play, we have the play's after party, which is exactly the same as all the other parties that we've seen already in this Listen, movie. It's a cheaper location if you just shoot it all in one day. I guess. And this is the part of the movie that pissed me off the most. I was in drama club for four years. I started in the musical Four times in a row. Our after party was at Denny's. There was no such. <laughs> there was no making out. I was thinking the same thing. I'm was, like, this is so much cooler than any drama fucking after party I've ever uh, been to. Uh, also, uh, the, the fact that Alex was the alpha male of drama and surrounded in puss 
made, <laughs> made it problematic. It's like, who wants to touch this drama dick? And uh, everybody was like, yes, everyone, all of us do. <laughs> A thousand hands raised. Yeah. No, we would sit at Denny, usually with our parents, in stage makeup. Yeah, right. And the waitresses would tell us that Denny's was closing, even though Denny's didn't close. And then we'd all drive home with our parents. And wipe off with too many baby wipes. That was our after party. Our ba- after party was really just how many baby wipes can you use on your face until you break out? And, and But in this universe, everybody just goes to the party and fucks afterwards. Yeah. It's just an orgy. It's just a Bacchae orgy. <laughs> right. I, I mean, maybe this this movie was really selling drama club. You want to fuck drama club? <laughs> I'll join their drama club. I'll join their drama club right the fuck now. If it gives me half a chance with Celine, who's that fat chick who just found Jesus again? I'll jump right on the bandwagon. I am all about it. But you know what? You're the exact right age for their drama club. It should work out well for you. Perfect. Um, this is also where we get, cause she keeps saying that she wants to take their relationship to the next level. And like anyone who hears that, he assumes she means that she wants to fuck, but that's not what she meant. So he takes her into the utility room to fuck or something. As, as, as you do. Yeah. Like a romantic. And, and look, okay, just to give you an idea, he goes to grab her ass and she stops him. So he's not even grabbing ass. Yeah. Like you get to do that with like the guys you play football with for fuck's sake. But no, he doesn't even get hand to ass. But, uh, but she's, and she's like, you know, I, we, I don't want to do this here. There's dog food in here. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, princess. I wanted him so badly to be like, yeah, that's my thing. I'm going to eat it, and you're going to yell at me. <laughs> Until I come. That's all I want. That's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> no, get out. <laughs> yeah, you hold the leash. Um, <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, this is like, she's like, you know, no, I, I didn't want to have sex with you. I meant I wanted to commit to you and you to commit to never having sex or something and he's like okay i'm gonna go fuck somebody like a grown-up then because i'm 31 so (laughs) so and and this is so bizarre because then we get the thing where she storms off but then she just storms right back on in the same yeah she's like a boomerang she literally like (laughs) (laughs) and immediately she must have been out of the house for 14 seconds and he's already in an upstairs bedroom making out with his uh, with her friend yes yeah Uh yeah that was some quick shit there the, the friend must have been waiting on the bed being like Tonight's the night. <laughs> <laughs> he just walks into the room quick. <laughs> we fucking. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's like, well, the dog food room didn't work out. Where else can I make out? Fuck. And also. She's like, I have some dog food in here. <laughs> <laughs> and also, okay, so this is the exchange that they have, too. So like, she walks in and, he, and, and her crush is making out with her friend or whatever. And she goes, what? You were too Christian for him. And he turns to her and he goes, Wait, are you like a a serious Christian? As if now's the time to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, right. Like that's the pertinent thing going on at the moment. Yeah. Holy shit. Well, I believe my notes at this point in the movie simply read, it's been an hour, nothing's happened, I need to pee. So this seems like a good spot for a break. But before we take it, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will Rachel, I don't know, feel good about herself or whatever? Does Alex like her like her or just like her? Do these shorts make her butt look too big? Find out the answers to these pressing questions and pretty much nothing else when we return for the incidental conclusion of I'm Not Ashamed. Hey, folks. We wanted to take a minute to give a huge thanks to everybody who made it out to the QED live show. Honestly, the only thing more fun than doing this for you guys is doing this with you guys. That said, we have an apology to issue. So, Morgan, can we get some sad apologetic music here? Great. Perfect. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick of the God Awful Movies podcast. And we have some fun on this show. But on last week's show, I went too far. And I'm here to issue a genuine apology. He is. Chubby Bunny is not funny. What? For those of you who aren't aware, Chubby Bunny, or CB as it's known, is a dangerous game that involves fitting as many marshmallows in your mouth as possible 
and trying to say the sentence chubby bunny as many times as you can. It's a vicious practice that kills over 340 Americans a year. It's a choking hazard, it's a waste of food, and I never should have mentioned it. I'd like to apologize to those who were hurt by my words. As a result, we've set up a fundraiser to help the victims of Chubby Bunny at killjohnlennox.com. Oh, oh, yeah, hold on, what? That's right, 100% of the proceeds of your donations will go to the brave men and women who've been killed or maimed playing Chubby Bunny. No. And I hope those words, along with the funds we raise, help to heal the wounds I created. But, but, Please go but, to killjohnlennox.com forward slash this is not a joke, let's all do it together. The password is Murgatroyd today. Andrew, Andrew, come here. And let's no, come let here the a healing begin. Dude, I fucking hate you. I'll give you a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. And before we get back to boring the fuck out of you with meaningless teenage nonsense drama, we're going to remind you again that there is something of import happening in the background of this movie, almost unbeknownst to this movie. So we're going to get a quick shot of Dylan and Eric shooting bowling pins, and then it's back to boring shit with Rachel. And specifically, this is the part where she like she's in the spot where everybody but her smokes. And this is where she meets one of the two shooter kids. Right. And he explains... He's an atheist, and, and that's why he's going to shoot everyone. Yeah, well, also, <laughs> he's really an atheist because he can't physically see God. That's, and that's really it. what it yeah. is. It's, it's, a, it's an object permanence problem. It's not <laughs> really about... Well, I love his actual line here is, you know, God's just some outdated cultural construct, and I'm writing in my notes, like, that's exactly what a mass murderer would say, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. A million yeah. times. Yeah, but again, we're not going to spend any time with this character whose complexity actually has meaning to us. Instead, she's going to notice that her pixie cut friend ran off and, 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 and instead she's going to leave the school shooter kid and go run off to find that girl. No, she spends her time chasing a hot mess. She's like, I have a hotter mess, but less threatening. <laughs> And it could not be more abrupt. He's like, yeah, man, you know, nobody gets me. And I feel like sometimes I might do something. And she's like, I am so sorry, but Celine is crying. Bye bye. <laughs> right. OK, I'm going to shoot up the school. All right. <laughs> Have fun shooting up at school. Whatever you said. <laughs> Shit. Well, and she she the the I feel like the important plot point, she tells Rachel she doesn't matter. Which means that we're going to need at least 23 minutes of this white girl moping because the other white girl said a mean thing to her. Yep. Another self-pitying montage. Yeah. But, like, this one's, like, suicidal and stuff. Oh, right. But, like, but this is also where she goes to the building ledge and she's about to jump off. And then she sees the dog tags and she changes her mind. So now Dylan and Eric have to do all the fucking work. <laughs> Isn't that just like it? Some Christian's about to do some charity work, and then two atheists have to do it instead. <laughs> well, guarantee for charity, folks. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Keith at Modest Needs said we were just like the Columbine shooters, and I think he meant it as a compliment. <laughs> he meant it in the nicest possible way. Yeah, so then she runs off to Nate the bum so that she can tell him that his dog tag saved her life. Or whatever. And I wanted him so bad to say, no, it was just kind of a mopey teenage girl cry for help thing, I'm sure. But he didn't because he still wants to fuck her, I guess. Right. And then they all lay hands on her to cure her depression, which hey, and not in fact, a sexy that's a great way. way to kill a kid. Well, I would also say oh. uh, if a bunch of people laid hands on me, that could be really fucking hot. If like the hands were like on my puss, like just saying <laughs> There are better oh, ways to do this, yeah. All over me. Oh, get a little Nate and a little Dylan and a little Eric and a little of that leftover baby oil and just see what happens? Oh, man. That's a, <laughs> see, that, that's the point. This movie had all the elements of what could be a good movie. <laughs> Including Crazy the baby billionaire oil. billionaire money. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, but that, but okay, so, but I guess the, the, the denouement of this scene is that she decides after all of this that she's not gonna apologize for Jesus any longer. 
because th- that means something to uh, I, I who the fuck when knows? was she supposed to have apologized for jesus i don't even no one know told her to Never at any point has anyone in this movie told her to apologize for Jesus, which is crazy because it's your movie. Right. They you would have it. asked someone. You could have been like, apologize for Jesus. And she would have been like, OK. And then later on, she would have been like, I'm not going to do that anymore. But this is basically a movie about why I stopped jogging. <laughs> Never an issue. Well, and, and like at the end of this scene, like she comes up and hugs her mom and her mom has this. Was that like supposed to be a dramatic moment? Look on her face to match my own. Yeah, because there's because nothing happened between there her was and no her mom. conflict. No, we're supposed to be affected by this. But the mom is not watching this movie. <laughs> well, more, more importantly, the mom like grounded her like once a summer ago. <laughs> Yeah, but is that what she's forgiving her for now? Who the fuck knows? Who knows? And then we move on to this. We get to this, like, um, walking down the hall, being actively hated by all the non-Christians scene. We get the, they're all going to laugh at you scene. Yeah, and man, am I, I just, watching this scene, I was like, man, am I glad nobody killed me in high school. My movie would not be as nice. <laughs> that, my movie would have been called Fuck That Guy. <laughs> It would have also had a Kickstarter campaign. (laughs) (laughs) They would have sold advertising on what would have been my yearbook page. (laughs) (laughs) Also, tiny moment, but we do have to touch on it. Uh, At one point, it cuts to her in class and one of the Columbine shooters in front of her. And he's wearing a T-shirt that says natural selection. Like, Natural Selection's a fucking band yes. that he's a fan of. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and also, as a teacher in that high school, I'd be like, stoked, you at least learned one concept in <laughs> school. Right, you, the poor kid's science teacher runs up to him and he's like, so, Eric, super into biology, huh? And he's like, yeah, I hate God. Well, that's not what that means <laughs> at all. Non-overlapping magic steria in that situation <laughs> <laughs> and then okay so then we get like her making up with nate the bum or whatever they're chatting again and and she tells him again minor point because everything in this movie is a minor point but she tells him at one point she's like well the worst part of of the thing with alex making out with my friend is that i didn't even get to bother him about jesus i i guess and then, and then, and then, she does a rap. She, Keisha, <laughs> what did you think of her Christian rap? Uh, <gasps> I, I'm not gonna say it was of the time and cultural appropriation just felt different. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna say it was just like part of me. It was like I don't know, maybe. If, she had been like stopped a movie, gone on tour with Limp Biscuit. I would have scared, <laughs> but she didn't. Yeah. She had to like totally get Columbined. The first time in my notes that I wrote, okay, I completely forgive Dylan and Eric now. <laughs> Slowly starting to root for the Columbine killers as you watch this movie. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't all that slow. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, no. I honestly, I, if they had come in and, and mass murdered me and all the people in that movie theater, I would have forgiven them at this point. Yes, they literally rap her and the guy together rap about being a warrior for Christ. She's not a pot tripping Christian. <laughs> and literally all my notes were at this point is I would pay any amount of money to have watched the first time Keisha watched the screen as that girl went, <laughs> I'm not a pot tripping Christian. I'm a God fearing, Satan slamming, wham bam, thank you, mammon, slip a finger in my butt, but not my vagina, cause that's sex. Christian. <laughs> How many takes do you think those actors used the N-word before they got one where they didn't accidentally use it? Um, I think that's how they start rolling instead of action. Oh, God. (laughs) And cut. Nigga. Gets them in and out of character. Yep. 
<laughs> Definitely gets him into character anyway. Meanwhile, the bad guys are making gun noises. Yep, that's all we're going to get from them. And it's now time for her prolonged and boring I'm a Christian presentation with her little seven-year-old handprint thing. And it was so – this is so boring. This is such a – because you know that she's about to die and it and you're just longing for it to happen. This was so boring that at this point in the movie, I literally just put my notes down and buried my face in my bucket of popcorn and tried to eat my way to the bottom. That's how <laughs> boring her like – Christians are like hands because they touch people. I was just like, nom, nom, nom. I'm going to make it all the way down. I'm alone in this theater. I just started looking for an outlet to charge my phone. Uh, uh, I found one. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I was worried um, about more, more like, like, like literally you just presented more stakes than this movie did. Uh, and, and, and at the end, too, she's like, and in conclusion, I'm really, really Christian. That's what makes me so much better than you people. Um, and, and of course, and this is where we get like we cut to the to the black kid. We see him for the second time just going, hmm, I get it. She's Christian. And then we're done with him. And now it's time for Eric and Dylan's video. Now, like you said uh, earlier, Eli, this could not more clearly be a cry for help. I'm about to do something violent. Boy, should someone be paying attention to what I'm doing kind of a video. Yeah, it is It is a video. And this is real, apparently. They made a video about them killing all the popular kids yeah. at school. And it's horrifying. I mean, it's ironically, it's pre-Columbine. So, like... There's a part of me that's like, yeah, I mean, we hadn't happened yet, so I can understand why this teacher was a little bit hesitant. But it is so clear, even in this scene, to just a ridiculous extent. The teacher just, like, pops the – she's like, do we have to keep watching this? And she pops the video out, and she's like, yeah, um, you guys get a D. Here you go. Right. Uh, what was it What was it called? Oh, it was called Cry for Help. Right. So Cry yeah. for Help. You D get a D. D for Cry for Help. And I, I, I want to point out, too, that, like, you know, the Columbine shooting was such a big deal when it happened. This was not the first random school shooting that we'd had in this country, right? There were ones before this. This one was just, a, like, to a larger scale than the other ones had been. So, the, like, yeah, yeah, this definitely is the kind of thing that should have sent up some red flags for some folks. But instead, again, instead of paying attention to that, we're now going to get the uh, the black kid catching up with her after class to tell her that, like, he thinks it's really neat that she's a Christian. He That's is, too. That's the second scene yeah. of two. Yeah, of 100%. two. Yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 well, we have to get that, that black kid stage time. It's not a traditional 90s representation of a movie if we don't have our token black people. Yeah, I right. mean, black dude, not black woman, black guy. Yeah, not yeah, people, absolutely. not people. Let's not kidding? get carried a black away. Woman here. in the nineties, <laughs> she's not dating Ross. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we gave you one. <laughs> she got to date Ross. <laughs> And I love that his message here is basically like, yeah, it's pretty hard being a Christian like 80 percent of our classmates are or more. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Yeah. Anyway. Right. And and her message to him is, yeah, it's pretty hard to be Christian. Hey, take care of Austin in case I die. OK. And he's like, <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Yeah, she asks him to be nice to the Downs kid and he will because he's a Christian. And, and then we get again, we get like a, a cry for help. Part two, where Dylan and Eric confront her in the stairwell or whatever for, you know, giving them shit about their videos. So they're like, yeah, like we were really kind of hoping that the counselor would, would help us, but you made her turn the video off. And she's like, yeah, sorry, I'm so Christian, you see. That's, Bye. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's it. Well, uh, the thing is, nobody also told them that this was a terrible video. Not not because of the content, <laughs> it was, but yeah. the, the framing was all off. The the editing, the <laughs> rhythm, I mean, dramatic tension. I could have used a couple of pans, a few push-ins. There were just so many 90s zooms. But, like, who am I to critique? <laughs> that was my issue with it, yeah. And now, like, I, the moment you've all been waiting for, prom. Yes, 
prom because now I guess the Asian geeky kid that she was hanging out with at the beginning of the movie is going to be her prom date because apparently we've been paying attention to all of these fucking characters in this stupid movie. And I, I just want to point this out because they, they very clearly in the movie make it like, and then she settled for the Asian kid, you know, and, and, and like this is based on a real kid. Like she went to prom with somebody. How does that kid feel about like being portrayed as like the backup plan? Yeah, that kid survived a school shooting and is still alive. Right. And, yes. and probably went to see this movie and was like, oh, I actually went to prom with her. So, like, I should go check. Oh, rough. <laughs> rough. <laughs> rough for me. <laughs> also, uh, he asked her to prom by writing in marshmallows on a tray. Yeah. I thought Fuck. it was gum. I, that's what I oh, thought it was, it was like chiclets or something. Yeah. I thought they were marshmallows. Anyway. Whatever they were, though, like, it, again, it, it's not like they had established that there was a thing between these two with marshmallows or chiclets or whatever. It was just some weird, random fucking thing that they introduced. Yeah. So anyway, so then we get her getting ready for prom as though we give a fuck. And and then we I get was so bored during this scene. I just wondered how everyone's prom was. If you look at my notes, it's just like, I wonder how Keisha's prom was. <laughs> Noah, did they have prom yet? <laughs> I wouldn't know. No one loved me. Um, but yeah, and, and also like they have her at the prom. She's doing the like slow dance, but she's like obviously looking at all the guys she'd rather be dancing with. Again, I'm just like, this is really a kid. He went and saw this movie. You know, he's my <laughs> age now. He's yeah. Uh, he's also a foot shorter than her and insists on doing the robot like several times. <laughs> like you feel like that actor was like, no, 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 no. watch this, huh? Eh? Comedy gold. <laughs> Breakout star from I'm Not Ashamed, whatever the fuck my name is. <laughs> you think Seth Rogen goes to see Christian movies? <laughs> and of course, then she runs, we have the scene where she like runs into Alex, the guy who made out with her friend at the punch, and he's sure meant to be less of a douche to her, and she's trying to forgive him, but she's just not quite Christian enough yet, or something. And, and they do the Shakespeare quote again, again. Again, three fucking times we have to sit through this shit. All the world to stay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the best part is he goes, well, you know, it's a quote about death. And she's like, well, it's also a quote about life. And I'm like, no, nope. it's actually a quote about <laughs> death because I read the play. Death. It's about death. When they're talking about exiting, that's what they what he meant was <laughs> dying. Anyway, so, and then Celine, the pixie hair girl, shows up and is clearly hinting around about maybe trying some lesbian stuff, but Rachel doesn't get the, the message, so she decides to go to church instead. And again, I will try it. I have looked up this actress. She is not married, and neither am I anymore. And she looks pretty naked on her um, IMDb photo, too. So, yes. Yeah. She's done yeah. a bunch of stuff. I have extensively researched this actress. <laughs> really? <laughs> extensively. This is what I was doing while they were talking about the plot of this movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> she seems like the actress who was like, like walked into an audition and was like excited she got the part. And then she was like, what's it about? <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, I was supposed to be in the other fu fuck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and but but basically like her her whole bit here is gee, I wish I was as Christian as you are, Rachel. <sighs> and then we get our 23rd and final Bible study scene where she basically turns to Nate and says, this is her actual line. Why can't I see my future? <sighs> yeah, literally. And he doesn't say Nobody could see their future. You know nobody could see the how future, right? The future works, right? Well, I was watching this movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? And they said we can remember <laughs> things. So how come we can't? Stop it. That's being spiritual. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> Satanism. So, yeah. And then, of course, Nate has to throw down some, you know, God always gods when you least expect it type wisdom or whatever. It would have been better if it was wrapped. <laughs> if she had been like well why does god stand there and not do anything when i'm in such pain and he just wraps his arms across his chest <laughs> let me break it down for you kj just pops up from below the screen oh yeah 
we're going to do this whole movie and rap. We're going to redo the whole thing. It'll be the new Hamilton. It'll be fucking awesome. Oh, oh my God. A rap version of this. Yes. <laughs> Keisha, you, me, Midnight Session. We're going to write this musical as soon as we hang up this recording. You are committed. <laughs> you have said the word yes on this recording. We could definitely finance that. I feel like we could finance the rap version of the Columbine Massacre Christian Tragedy movie porn. Fun fact, it would be more tasteful than this movie. It could not be less tasteful. <laughs> so, yes, by default, it would be more tasteful. And then finally, we get to the big day. And we know it's the big day because we get her waking up on the day of the attack. And the guy on the radio says, it's April 20th, 1999. You know, like they do. They always identify the year. Well, not just that. He goes, it's uh, April 20th, 1999, Hitler's birthday. And I wanted so badly for it to flash cut to that guy in a meeting later. Hey, Dave. Stop telling people when it's Hitler's birthday. <laughs> no, 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 also, but they gotta know. They gotta remember Hitler's birthday. Stop counting down the days till Hitler's birthday. Like, today is the only day where it kind of made sense, but you do the 364 days until Hitler's birthday, you seem really into and Hitler And stop Dave. calling them listen, shopping listen, days. Listen, I, I have a Hitler day calendar. <laughs> Today's just his birthday. It's like an advent calendar, except for they're just shower stalls. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> You'd like it. <laughs> so, and then we get like, uh, we, we, you know, just, just so you remember, you know, these guys are bombing shit. So we get like D Dylan and Eric setting their bombs in the school. And again, you're just like, why aren't we watching their movie? That would be maybe interesting in some, on some level. But no, we're not. Instead, we're learning that the guy from before whose parents were getting divorced, remember him? No, of course you don't, because there's 900 characters in this stupid fucking movie. Anyway, he wants to talk to her at lunch. That will be important in the relative sense that things are important in this movie. Right. Then she gives Madison her, here, I forgive you, because I'm going to die note. <laughs> right. Like that morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. And also, okay, so that we get this little little snippet and this will come back later because the teacher comes up and she says oh Rachel that's a very good drawing you're doing what is it a drawing of and she's like it's eyes and tears what the fuck do you think it is and the teacher goes why 13 tears though and of course I'm writing in my notes because there has to be a certain amount no matter what right but this will all come back it'll be very important that's God speaking through her drawing I guess Anyway, so and if her, it had been 12 tears, it would have been like, well, we really only were counting the, the students, that teacher, right? <laughs> fuck them. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And if it had been nine, they would be like, well, not the not the killers. We weren't counting the the, the D Dylan and Eric either. Yeah. And, and and if it was eight, it would be like, eight, yeah, not that black kid. Uh, <laughs> Come on. We're going to count he, Steve? We're going to count Steve when Rachel died? Come on. <laughs> oh, shit. So now we get to lunch because like her and Madison have made up now so she can finally get around to dying. So we get to lunch and she goes outside to talk with divorced dad kid. In the meantime, Dylan and Eric are over by the car. Their bombs in the cafeteria didn't go off on time. So now they're going to get their guns and we finally get to see some fucking carnage. Except yeah. not really. Except not at all. And then so, OK. I mean, this has been told a couple of times, but the divorce kid is the one who says the, do you believe in God? And then they shot her story. Right. He never had them do this whole fucking waterboard back and forth thing that happens in the movie where he's like, are you a Christian? And she's like, you know, I'm a Christian. And he's like, you ready to die? And she's like, do it, bitch. And then he fires the gun. <laughs> it's just fucking insane. They also, in this movie, they have him getting shot before and like passing out and before yeah. this happens mm -hmm. so maybe he just dreams about this long <laughs> fucking fuck dirty knows? hairy ass conversation she had the truth is it's incredibly sad that they killed this high school girl and whether or not they asked her if she believed in god and shot her is entirely irrelevant to the motivations of these killers and right. that's what's really important this whole movie was built on a pyramid of bullshit, which, which is the sneaky idea that the Columbine killers wouldn't have done this if they had believed in God. And that's 
that's the truly poisonous twist on this film. Yeah. Is that they killed Rachel because she was a Christian. And the truth is they killed Rachel well, because they didn't get the help they needed and we keep giving people guns when we don't need any fucking guns. Well, and and also the other thing about this is that this movie very clearly sells this message that like there were 13 victims, but this one was the most Christian, so she matters the most. Right. Yeah, I I mean there there was a kid named Isaiah, the the black kid who got uh shot Where's his movie at? Uh, uh, so, somebody uh, hit up the film studio and tell them, uh, wh- what about that one? Well, he probably, <laughs> he was, he might have been a secret Muslim like Obama. So. Oh, that's right. He was a nation of Islam. Yeah. Let's not get it twisted. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, I don't know if you know this, but my cousin's friend's cousin's daughter's sister's roommate told me that right before they shot him, they were like, are you black? And he was like, you know it. And they were like, you sure? And he was like, uh-huh. And so they shot him for being black. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of dialogue before <laughs> a horrific <laughs> act. Almost like it'll remove all the dramatic tension. Well, but the difference being, though, that they actually did shoot the kid for being black, right? I mean, they yes, did they shoot did. kids for being like jocks and shit. Yeah, they, they, that's the thing is that there were uh, this actually happened only not to Christians, right? Like it would be it would be like me saying, you know, I got killed in the Holocaust too, Jews. I should get a country. <laughs> It's fucking ridiculous. And now, by the way, this is when the movie starts and ends. Because, like, they put the gun to her head and kill her, and now she's gone. And it's just like, okay, but, like, there was this whole school shooting. Are we not going to spend any? No, we're, we're, we're done with that, huh? Nope, totally done. They literally just, there's the news footage of the, the actual kids from the Columbine the shooting. actual fucking kids, yes. Uh, oh, running God, away was- and how horrible that was and how scary that was. And and it's really poisonous and man- manipulative and shitty. And I just – this whole like newsreel section, I was just like, can you imagine us using a dead kid for our message? Someone would justifiably run us over with a steamroller. If I made a like God is dead movie where it was just about some sweet kid who realizes that God doesn't exist and then someone shoots him – Everyone would be like, gross, dude. But this movie's just like, ah, what are you going to do? Well, I think luckily, though, I do think a lot of people were like, oh, fucking gross on this movie. I think, you know, a lot of the movies we do, they they sort of get overlooked because all they're saying is like atheists are evil and of Hitler or whatever. But I think the poison and disgustingness of this movie actually did resonate with the average person because I've seen a ton of shit online about how despicable this movie is and not just coming from the normal atheist sources. So at least there's that. There's a reason why none of us could find a responsible theater to have this movie. And I saw it in Times Square at the one theater that shows Christian movies. <laughs> Noah had to go search through the jungles. <laughs> and it was only playing at 3 p.m. in New That's- York City. <laughs> I could only All find it New at York 145. City. I couldn't find a flesh fucking showing after 145. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, they tug at your heartstrings with a, a little bit more of this fucking newsreel footage, which, again, such a disgusting fucking thing to put in this movie. But at any rate, and then we cut to her car where everybody's going to, like, put flowers on her car or whatever. And this is a thing that really happened, I, I, I guess, you know, just showing us once again that this actually was a pretty popular kid and, and like, probably didn't really have like problems compared to the average teenager in high school or whatever. Um, and apparently the car that they used is actually her car. They actually took her car from Denver to like Nashville or wherever the hell they filmed this uh, for this scene. Um, Cause that was important. But yeah, now all of the kids are going to Jesus because she inspired them. And uh, well, while they were all gathered around the car, I just wrote in my notes What these kids needed some exposure therapy. They need James Lindsay to jump out in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep cut right there. Only the That's real fans cut. get that one. That's right. That's the and, people who listen to me when I'm serious. <laughs> and then Nate, we, then we cut to the funeral where Nate gives the eulogy because apparently my bladder can take it. Yeah. I was uh, shocked that they had anything left to say. <laughs> well, they didn't, though. They didn't, but we kept going anyway. Yeah. Did Did his eulogy end with the sentence... What happened to her? 
I, I, I can't imagine I was paying that close of attention. Is that is that how he finished it? Yes. I was, one I was still looking for an outlet at this point. <laughs> Just crawling around the theater in the dark. Yeah. Checking under people's legs. Oh, wait, nobody's legs. Nobody. <laughs> at one point he goes, what happened to her? And it's supposed to be like this melodramatic moment, but it's this weird pause. So I wrote in my notes, she got shot, dude. Not the time. Also, there's a close up of the coffin and you notice that everyone has signed her coffin like a yearbook. That was weird. That was a weird shot of this movie. Well, and, and also like the, the, the eulogy he's giving is so very clearly. Oh, I know. Like once she got into college and got a little more experimental, I know I was going to get all up in that shit once she got over Jesus. God damn it. Why'd he shoot her now? Yeah, um, would have been yeah. great. It was a little painful. And uh, so then we cut to the final scene of the movie. This is like mom, like bringing her stuff into her bedroom, being all sad. And then this really contrived moment where she like tries to hang up the dog tag. So they fall. So she has to move the dresser. And when she does, she sees the handprint that wasn't a turkey that um, Rachel drew when she was eight years old. But inside it, she mm -hmm. wrote, if you're reading this, I'm going to get shot. Save me. <laughs> Signed, Baby Time Traveler. <laughs> you know, so what she had actually written in there was something about, my name is Rachel and I'm going to touch millions of people through my death or actions or something. And Yeah, yeah. it was uh, it that the egomania of an eight-year-old child right? <laughs> was like, I'm going to touch the world. My name is Rachel and I am God. <laughs> well, and also the thing is, is this is supposed to be that like, oh, she must have known like Jesus had whispered into her ear even as a child. But it's like, yeah, if she was a Reiki practitioner, this would also work. OK, and, and, and I wrote in my notes like that is the lamest like quote unquote miracle ending possible. Except for them, they, that they then go to the picture that she drew and said, 13 tears, just like 13 victims. I'm like, oh, that's the lamest miracle ending. Exactly. Okay, my bad. I didn't think it could be less impressive than this, but it is. When do you think they just, they found that? And do, do you think someone just like, was like, I don't know, there's only 11 tears. I'll just draw in the last <laughs> <laughs> Eh, what is she going to do? She ain't going to say shit. Eh, eh, there you go. Shit. Add a couple more crucifixes. Now, here's the question. Did you guys stay for the whole thing to see the after credit scene? Uh, no, was Where there an after hand, credit scene? Yeah, her hand pops out of the dirt. It does not. <laughs> no. That would be awesome. <laughs> the sequel. Columbine 2. It doesn't does call that me. make me so happy. Well, we should, no, I should, I should edit that all out so that if anybody watches this afterwards, they watch the whole thing. I could be like, yeah, I remember that part. That was great. And we'll make them sit through the whole credits. That'll be awesome. <laughs> oh, so, so good. <laughs> so, okay. So I know this is a bit of a tall order to film, but what would you guys say was the most offensive thing about this movie? I'm going to go with her Christian spoken word poem rap thing. <laughs> it's, I, I got to I got to I, I got to keep with the basics. I, I, I have to go with the fact that, uh, the, the, the feminist in, in me, uh, she's got to learn how to like, just chill and not ask for so much commitment. <laughs> so, enjoy where you are, not where you are trying to be like, enjoy the journey. <laughs> Because all the world's a stage. <laughs> so, you know, oh, oh, uh, and, and, and finally, um, uh, the way she was called deep so early in the movie. Yeah. And proved it all wrong. <laughs> yeah. She couldn't have been more shallow. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the um, learning about evolution turns you into a school shooter thing. Call me old fashioned. Um, sure. OK, so to wrap up here, I, I feel like now that Pure Flix has opened this Pandora's box, it's only a matter of time until the market is just flooded with capitalizing on a national tragedy for reasons wholly unrelated to the tragedy itself type movies. And I feel like we need to get in on the ground floor. So to close off the review tonight, I figure we could brainstorm Keisha, Eli, 
what tragedy should we capitalize on and what should be the moral of our story? Oh, oh, I got one. Uh, how about one for us? Uh, he was only in high school when the towers fell. And two decades later, he would take on the religion that did it in The Saving Atheist. Oh, where we like school shoot a madrasa? Yes. <laughs> school shoot a madrasa. I want to be on that list with Majid and I and Hersi Lee. Right, damn it. <laughs> I've said way meaner shit than those motherfuckers. <laughs> it's fine. No big deal. I'm not jealous. Do you think they get parties? <laughs> I don't even have a fucking fatwa yet. Holy shit. I know. Um, so uh, I, I guess if this is round robin, uh, my, mine would be Sandy Hook, but it's a mashup of Look Who's Talking. <laughs> he can... That is the best idea ever. As soon as we are finished with our rap musical about Columbine, we start working on Look Who's Talking, the Sandy Hook musical. Yeah, that way we can hear their Christian thoughts. Except for that black kid. I don't know. He, he like, deserved it or something. Oh, he can be voiced by Samuel L. Jackson? Yep. You can stop selling, sir. It's sold. Well, I, I have yes. to say, Keisha, not many people have the stomach to come back for more. Very impressed. If our listeners would like to hear a little more from you, where could they go? Uh, you can go to KeishaZoller.com. You can follow me on Twitter. I post about all my shows. Uh, I have some fun shows and whatnot coming up uh, at UCB at the Upright Citizens Brigade at the People's Improv Theater. I don't know. Find me online. I don't know. Google me. Sure. Awesome. Or just check the show notes and we'll have everything linked there. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. And here's hoping we can make a trilogy of it in the future sometime. Yay. This time uh, I want a black movie. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're much worse. They tend to be much Done worse. and done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, fuck the caveats. Roll. <laughs> and well, that does it for our review of I Am Not Ashamed. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to get you all ticklish over next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. The Atheist Delusion. Oh, a lot of people are going to be really excited to hear that, myself included. Oh, give it, give it, give it. <laughs> oh, I've missed him. I've missed him. I've missed him. <sighs> Oh, Ray. His scent lingers in my memory and his taste <laughs> lingers on my taste buds. And now we'll find out just what the fuck he was doing at Reason Rally. I, I feel like we already know. But yes, now, unfortunately, this may be the end of God Awful Movies. It may be the end of The Scathing Atheist. Because if the advertising is to be believed, Ray Comfort will cure us of our atheism with one simple question in, uh, in next week's film. So... And I don't think the question is, did you just fucking lick me? So <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it is, though, you know, you can feel confident, at least comfortable that you changed the, 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 the future course of the film. So, you know, it's true. There if you, you if you offered nothing else to the world, that would be enough. So, I am excited, <laughs> as am I, sir. So with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode 63 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Keisha for suffering alongside us tonight. A big get well soon to Heath and a gargantuan debt of gratitude to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash God awful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the links on the show notes to this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chug of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. My name is Jesus and I'm here, to, here say. to say Jesus thinks every single morning. Shit. God damn. One fuck, of these days, fuck, we'll fuck. get it. So white. The filmmakers took out the line where one of the shooters confessed that he's gay because blaming the Darwinists and video game makers was apparently enough. There have been 57 mass shootings since Columbine, but we still won't make a goddamn movie about gun control. Hey, we both did real ones. Weird. 
My name is Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm here to say DJ happy Jesus. birthday to good zebra damn snakes. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2016. All rights reserved.